Congratulations, you got an abstract accepted for a presentation at a national meeting. Having a paper accepted is a big honor and you should be proud. At the same time, giving a podium presentation in front of a big crowd can be challenging and provoke anxiety, especially for the novice presenter. In this short video, we'll review the key steps towards generating a clear and concise oral presentation of your research. We'll show you some actual demonstrations of good and bad techniques. Finally, we'll give you five key pearls to giving a good talk. I hope you enjoy it. The number one most common mistake I see in presentations is losing the audience. What I mean is, for one reason or the other, your message just doesn't get across. The audience tunes out, gets confused, or just gives up. This happens for a number of reasons. It might be your slides, or the pace in which you speak, or your volume, or your lack of eye contact. Whatever the case is, following a few simple guidelines can help get your message across during a scientific presentation. Let's divide this up into two main areas. Number one, your content, and number two, your delivery. Your content refers to the actual data and information you have in your talk. To start, take a critical look at your data and determine the two or three main points you want to highlight. For each of those points, plan on having a specific slide dedicated to that concept. From there, think about what background information is necessary for the audience to hear in order to understand your main points. Also, as part of your background, you should let the audience know why this topic is important and why you have decided to try to solve this problem. Once you have the background and your main points squared away, you need to tell the audience how you did the research. This is the methods. Some researchers like to describe the methods as they show the results. This is an advanced approach and should be reserved for the experienced presenter. For many, showing a single slide that outlines the methods and approach is an easy way to define what you're working with. Overall, the background and methods portion of your talk should be about one-third of your presentation. The results should be about half of your talk and the remaining time spent on conclusions and future studies. Let's talk about slide structure. Let's imagine we have an eight-minute talk. We will assume that it will take us about one minute per slide, so let's make a 10-slide talk and we can adjust it later. This is really important. Try not to put too many words or figures on an individual slide. It's just too confusing. This slide is an example of a slide that is just too busy. You are going to overwhelm your audience. This slide has all the same points as the previous one, but has been cut down so it's easier to process. Another important point. Use color schemes that are easy to read. Sometimes the lighting or projector quality is suboptimal in the auditorium. This slide has poorly contrasting color schemes. In this slide, the contrast is optimal for the reader. Here's another example. Let's talk about the specific slides. The title slide typically has some logos and other emblems from the home institutions. As a presenter, your name should be in bold to show the audience your role in the project. For example, if you are presenting on behalf of another person, leave them as first author, but highlight your name so the audience understands the dynamics. Slide number two. This is typically where you will introduce the audience to the problem at hand and why you want to solve it. You can show the number of people affected, the cost of the disease, and other examples which demonstrate the scope of the problem. Slide number three. You might use this to show more background information, but this is a good place to show your previous work in this area. You might mention a paper you have published in the past or studies that your lab partner presented at another meeting, all under the heading of previous work. Okay, now that you've given some background information, it's time to talk about your specific project. Slide number four. This is where you can discuss your approach and methods. This is especially important if your studies include a unique model or analytic. Slide number five. It's time to get into the meat of your talk. Here you would show some results. If you have multiple pieces of data to show, you might want to reveal them piece by piece. This gives the audience a chance to focus on each element individually. Slide number six. Again, show more results. If possible, use a similar format to the previous slide. 
This way the audience becomes familiar with your layout and they can follow along more easily. Slide number seven. So you've given the audience a few of your results. At this point, you may want to indicate that you're about to show your most important slide or perhaps tell an anecdotal story about how the data was generated or an unexpected finding. This style of telling a story will keep your audience engaged as your talk is dragging into its final stages. Slide number eight. It's time to start wrapping it up. Indicate that you are entering your last few slides. If there is a final piece of data to show, you can slide it in here. Or you may want to begin to put your data in the context of your previous work or the bigger picture. The audience needs a summary of your findings. This is the take home points. What should they have learned? Slide number nine. It's often helpful to mention future directions or again, put your work in the context of the bigger picture. How will this work help change the current paradigm? What are the practical next steps to taking this towards clinical reality? Slide number 10. This is sometimes called the sunset slide. Most researchers save a slide to thank and highlight the team of people that helped them in their research. Many people will show pictures of the team, but this is not necessary. Simply listing the role that your mentors and support staff have played in your success is enough. Finally, this is a good place to indicate the funding mechanisms that may have been used for your research. Showing a picture of you rock climbing or holding your child also is not necessary, although some presenters find the use of personal images to be helpful in closing. Likewise, it is not necessary to ask the audience if they have questions. This is usually the prerogative of the moderators. Simply thank them for listening. So you've made your slides and now you're ready to give your talk. Your presentation delivery is as important as the actual content of your talk. Whitney Lane, a resident, and Jonah Orr, a medical student, will help us with this next part. First things first, get a good night's sleep before your talk. We all know a well-rested brain performs better than a sleep-deprived brain. There are many factors that go into delivering a good talk. Some are out of your control, like noise in the auditorium, AV malfunction, the moderator mispronouncing your name or calling the wrong name altogether. Be prepared for these types of problems. Always make sure ahead of time that the AV team in the room has your talk. Check to make sure any videos have come through the system intact. The best time to do this is in the intermission before your talk. Introduce yourself to the moderators before the session starts. When I moderate a session, I always find it comforting to see the presenter and confirm they're ready to go. Also, you can correct any errors in the program and you can let them know how to pronounce your name if you like. Sometimes this is not possible due to time constraints, but if you see the moderator setting up ahead of time, this is your chance to say hello. Before the session starts, try to familiarize yourself with the stage and the podium. Sometimes the stairs are steeper than you expected or the podium is positioned awkwardly in relation to the screen. It's nice to know this ahead of time. Be familiar with the slide advancement mechanism. Is it a mouse or a keyboard or something else? Find out where the time counter is located so you can keep your eye on it during the talk. Always arrive for your talk early, preferably at the beginning of the session. Sometimes the schedule changes at the last minute. Check in on the room during the day and see if it's running on time or not. This will give you an idea of when your talk will happen. Be prepared to walk to the stage. Typically, it is best to sit up front. Another option is to walk up towards the side of the stage as the presenter before you is finishing up with questions. When your name is called, walk up to the podium and get yourself settled. You do not need to shake the hands of the moderators unless they extend a welcoming hand. Adjust the microphone. You want the microphone to be at the level of your mouth when you are standing up tall. Most arrangements will have an adjustable microphone. If you are very tall, you may need to lean down. If you are not very tall, you may need to arrange a riser ahead of time so you can reach the microphone and be seen over the podium. Based on the formality of the meeting, you may want to thank the members of the society and the moderators for the opportunity to present your work. A very formal introduction will follow a specific cadence set forth by the meeting which may include specifically naming the moderators with their formal titles. It's important to speak slowly and clearly. Practicing your dictation is very helpful in this regard. 
Be sure to enunciate words. Most people naturally speak faster when they're nervous. This can be distracting. Also, make as much eye contact as possible. Looking down at cards or at the computer monitor is the fastest way to lose your audience. Seeing your friends or mentors in the audience can also be distracting. Sometimes it's helpful to blankly look at empty spaces in the back of the auditorium. This has the appearance that you're actually talking to them without the potential for distraction. It is generally advisable to memorize your speech, especially at the beginning of your career. More advanced speakers can effectively wing it simply by looking at their slides. In these cases, they have likely given that particular talk many times. Almost uniformly, the speaker will stay behind the podium. Formats where the speaker meanders around the stage are appealing, but not typical of scientific presentations. They also require a portable microphone. Be prepared for an echo in the PA system. There is no easy way to get around this, and only experienced speaking will make this more tolerable. Be sure the first three or four slides are well rehearsed. This is when you will be the most nervous. Stumbling out of the gate will make you even more nervous. It's like a gymnast or figure skater. Hitting that first tricky move is key to relaxing and enjoying the rest of your performance. As you are speaking, be sure to change your tone and inflection. This will sound more natural and keep the audience engaged. Try to make it sound like you're telling an interesting story. After all, your data didn't just show up. Let the audience feel the struggle you had to get the data. Mention pitfalls, aha moments, breakthroughs. When you get to your results slides, slow down. Take your time explaining the graphs and figures the audience is looking at. While you've seen the image 100 times, they're just now seeing it for the first time. You may need to orient them to the axis of the graphs or the imaging analysis used before actually explaining the finding. Use arrows or circles to highlight especially important pieces of data. You may also use a laser pointer or the computer arrow to direct the audience's attention to a specific finding. If you notice you are running low on time, plan to skip the future direction slide. That is the least important and can be discussed during the questions. At the end, thank your audience for their time and attention and prepare for questions. Have a notepad and pen with you when you start to receive questions. For complex, multi-tier questions, you may need to write down a few notes. When you're walking off the stage to return to your seat, thank the moderators. Finally, it is considered rude to leave the session immediately after your talk. Sometimes this is unavoidable. However, if possible, try to show respect to the other presenters by sticking it out until the end. You never know. Sometimes at the end of a session, an interested person may come by and ask you questions about your work. We hope these tips and demonstrations have been helpful. Most importantly, enjoy your presentation experience. This is your chance to shine. You have put in a lot of work and now the reward is recognition for your efforts. With preparation, anxiety can be minimized. Plan on rehearsing your talk in your hotel room with a timer to become familiar with your delivery. Avoid caffeine immediately prior to your talk if you tend to get nervous. Consider stepping out of the auditorium 30 minutes before your talk to use the bathroom and get some water. Try relaxation and breathing techniques as you focus to perform your talk. Avoid cramming for your talk as you sit there waiting to give your talk. With time and experience, you will find your own strategies to give the best talk you can give. Finally, to wrap things up, we wanted to review five pearls to giving a successful talk. After you make your talk, cut it down some, just to the two or three main points. Rehearse your talk. Have the first two or three slides thoroughly memorized so you don't stumble out of the starting block. Speak slowly and clearly with some variation in tone and emphasis while maintaining eye contact with the gallery. Try to tell a story. Simply reading figure legends to the audience is boring and a quick way to lose them. And finally, indicate to the audience when you're giving them the really important information. We hope this has been helpful and I look forward to seeing you at the podium.